With Rugby League just around the corner like trials are literally this weekend, we are going to go and talk about every single team's strength and weakness for the 2023 season. So getting straight into it with the Dolphins, their biggest weakness for me is just the unknown. We have no idea how they're going to play, how the play is going to play together, how they're going to gel. There's literally just so many question marks about the Dolphins this season, and that is why I think it's their biggest weakness. It but it could also become like their biggest strength because how are the other teams going to be able to plan against a team that they've never seen play before? So I wouldn't be surprised if the Dolphins sneak a couple of uh, cheeky wins against some bigger teams, but their biggest strength for me is Wayne Bennett. He's a guy who's been there and done it. He's been there for an inaugural season for a club before with the like, Broncos. He knows how to build a club up. The Knights are the only club he's never ever taken to a grand final and it wasn't really his fault with the whole Nathan Tinkler situation and that all that jazz. So yeah, for me, he's probably one of, if not the best coach of all time. So I think having Wayne Bennett there is definitely a big strength for the Dolphins side. Now over the Tigers, for me, their weakness is their back line. It's still not great. Like Dane Lowry is a decent player. Nofaluma is a good player, but you know, I don't know. He's a bit past with the Tigers. Mum, like Kemba Marlo, a bit like uh, not definitely not as good as he used to be. But their centers are a bit. How you going? Like Brent Naden and what Tommy Talao. It's ooh, a bit like some red flags there for them. But I'm sure they figure it out. But I think on the contrary, their strength is their four pack. Their four pack is nuts this season. They've actually got pretty good depth as well because it looks like Joe Offahengawi will probably likely play. Uh, front row rather than lock so then their, their front row stacks are actually ridiculous moving on to the Warriors now for me their weakness it's probably the amount of trouble they're gonna have to do this season like I guess it's a strength for them in terms of these clubs are gonna have to go and adapt to, adjust to the time zones and stuff in New Zealand and that international travel aspect and stuff but it's also the Warriors have to do that every second week and they haven't done that for a full season in like what since 2019 so like four years ago I really feel like it might take a, a quite of a toll on the Warriors, guys. For me, though, the strength of the Warriors is their new signings. There's some life and excitement around the Warriors. They've either got Chance or Klukstad or Tamade Martin playing um, fullback with one of them playing either 5'8 or centre, like whatever, like the way they go with their halves, Volkman or Johnson. But Nia Corey is a really good signing. Mitch Barnett brings some punch to the four pack. You've also got Jackson Ford, is a really hard worker there. Dylan Walker's going to offer so much off the bench. Luke Metcalf as well. Like, there are some really, really good signings there for the Warriors, and I think. Hopefully, it can be the start of something new for, uh, over at the Warriors. Now, the Knights, for me, their weakness is their depth. Because if you have a look, yes, they've like, some signs some really good players and stuff. But if Jackson Hastings goes down, what well, then you've got Adam Clooney and it's back to square one. If, I suppose, Ponga goes down, you've got Tyson Gamble. But if whoever they play at fullback, like if Lockie Miller goes down, what do they do then? Are they going to play... Caleb Ponger at fullback, they're going to sort of say stuff what it, like the whole thing we've just been doing for the last few months. Like, even for me, like their centre depth is like as soon as Gagai or Best get injured, which is pretty likely happens all the time, you're bringing in what Mapapalangi or Naro Tuala, it's just the, it falls off a cliff dramatically. But in saying that, I will say their strength is their strength in the weak areas of their squad. So they needed a half at the brought in Hastings, they needed the ball playing 13, they've brought in Adam Elliott. I think they've really like. They've signed for what their team needs, which is really good to see. Now, over to the Titans. For me, their weakness... <laughs> I haven't looked at that. Their weakness is also their strength, pretty much. But their weakness is, like, means continuity. Like, are they going to be able to play consistently with the same group of players week in, week out? Or are they going to do what they did last year and chop and change and try and find what works? Like, for me, I've said it a thousand times. Like, if whoever they pick at seven needs to be their seven at least round 12. If it's not working out for that, then, okay, you can, like, bring in like one of the other guys and I like play around a bit but and they need to just for the first half of the season at least just try and get some combinations and gelling going but <laughs> their strength though for me is their depth in key areas so fullback you've got Jaden Keelan, AJ Brimson, 5'8", AJ Brimson, um, Kieran Foran and Tommy Weaver I believe his name is and then halfback you've got Boyd and Sexton so there's a lot of competition for places and people pushing each other to get better and better every day but yeah, as I said, I just hope that the Titans do go about that the right way. For the Doggies, the weakness for me is something that's actually off the field. And it's just the amount of excitement and anticipation that the fans have. And I just think they're going to get let down. 2023 isn't the year for you guys. It's a building year again. You just need to be patient. Uh, like Obviously, the new signings and everything's coming in. Cameron Serrato, like it is exciting times to be a Dogs fan. But it's just be patient. Please just be patient. So the strength of the Doggies for me, though, is the new signings. Like... 
bring in Reed Marnie is amazing. He's such a good player. Honestly, probably underrated for how good he is. And you've also got William Kikia coming in, unreal. Cameron Soraldo is a sick signing, really good pick up. One of the most like sought after player like people across rugby league in general. Uh, so yeah, like it is exciting times for the doggies. And if you're a dogs fan, like I'm happy for you because you looks like you're finally gonna get some good footy after a few years of just absolute garbage. Now moving to Manly, weakness. Tommy Turbo's fitness because he, he, oh, they're relying on him and they need to not rely on him in a sense because like he's just he's so good he is so so good one of the best players I've ever ever seen but you just can't rely on the bloke to stay fit because he's just going to do a hammy every second week and it sucks but I don't know it, yeah I suppose they've got the depth and the coverage now for him but you don't really want to rely on that do you you want Tommy Turbo fit there for 20 plus games a season but the strength of Manly is Tommy Turbo. He is, as we've seen, on his day, probably the best player in the comp. I don't think it's unfair to say that. Like, he's a really, really good player and almost untouchable when he's on. So I think if they can get him fit and firing, it'd be interesting to see how he plays in a Seawold system, but he could really, really be the reason why Manly make the top eight, make top four. Like, that's what, that's what they did last time Turbo was fit. So who's to say they can't do it again? Um, moving over to the Dragons, their weakness is their forward pack for sure. After you look, like, go from, what, after Jaden saw Jack DeBellin and Jack Bird, there's not much else doing really for that forward pack. Oh, Black Laurie as well. But after that, that's pretty bad. And like the depth isn't there. There's good guys coming through, but I don't know if they're ready just yet or like ready to make an impact. You can't rely on them anyway. Let's just say that. Now, their strength, though, is Ben Hunt and aspects of their back line. So, Ben Hunt, obviously, is probably one of the best halfbacks going around the comp. Can they rely on him to not get injured? Because he is, what, 32? It's getting a bit worrying. But, like, if Zach Lomax can have a good season, Moses Sully is really good if he can stay fit. Matt Fina is unreal. Um, Ravalawa, too, like, he's good on his day. And hope, I think Tyrus Stone's in for a big year. So, that's why I think their back line is one of their strengths. Maybe go to the Broncos. I think their weakness for me is just the amount of errors that their back line makes. I think if you have a look at, like, the top five error makers from last season, four of them are on the Broncos this year. Reese Walsh, Selwyn Cobbo, Katoni Staggs. And Corey Oates, maybe, I think. Like, it was an <laughs> error central there um, for the Broncos. I think it's something that they really need to improve on. And it's not that hard, really. It's sort of just alertness, awareness, and being better at playing under fatigue kind of thing. Um, the strength, though, for me, is they've got a very well-rounded side. Like, 1 through 13, even of their bench, like, it's pretty competitive and level. Like, I wouldn't say that their back line outshines their four-pack and vice versa. They've both got little bits of holes and but they both have like stars as well. So I think the Broncos, yes, there's some off-field drama and stuff going on, but there's no excuse for them to not make the top eight this season with that squad they've got. Over the Raiders, their weakness for me is just their inability to take it to the next level. And I think it could just be the playing group not being at that level. I don't know. It just seems like they're a team that can float around fifth to eighth. They just lack the X factor maybe. A punch to go through and like, be one of the teams elite, uh, one of the comps elite teams. But uh, for me, their strength though is Joseph Tarpane, just on career best form. He's so so good, and like the mix of young and old. So they've got guys like Tarpane's probably so he's middle aged for a uh, for a rugby league player. But you've got uh, guys guys that are aging out, like Papali mentoring the young boats coming through, like Trey Mooney, and that's sort of what we see. Like Jamal Fogarty can mentor the younger guys coming through. Jared Croker mentoring like Tim McCourt and Sebastian Chris. Like they, they do have a good mix of young and old, and I think it's going to pay dividends for them in a couple of years' time. Now over to the Rabbitohs. Weakness for me is their depth in key positions. With the Rabbitohs, if one of their like a spine players gets injured, they should be fine. But if a couple do, they are in trouble. I think like tr like the Troll hasn't got the best injury record, but for example, let's say. Cody Walker and Damien Cook get injured at the same time. You've got Blake Taff and Peter Mamazoulis coming in. And it's like, yes, they're good players and can f fill a hole. But if those bo both those guys are out, it's a bit troublesome. And then I'm pretty sure Blake Taff's also like Latrell Mitchell's replacement. So if then Troll gets injured while Cody Walker's out, then what do you do? I think, is it Dean Hawkins maybe that they've got there? I don't know. Either way, like that does sort of worry me, especially given the age of... Cody Walker and Damian Cook, like they are starting to get a bit on, like get on and that sort of thing, and could be they're, they're more prone to injuries. Um, 
But for me though, speaking of like, all those guys we just mentioned, that's their strength, is their X factor. Guys who can just create something out of absolutely nothing and just turn the game on its head. I'm um, gonna think, especially towards the pointy end of this season, the Rabbitohs could be relying on that and could look to that to win a comp. The Roosters for me, their weakness is just injury prone players. So you can't really rely upon Luke Keery to be there 25 games in a year now as well. Like Sam Walker's already got shoulder problems. Jared Rhea Hargo's in and out of the side. His hammies are blown now, so like you can't really rely upon him. It's worrying, it sucks, because like they've probably got the best one through 13 in the comp, but it's just whether you can keep them on the park at the same time. Even guys like Tupanua had a big injury last year. Um, Victor Radley, I mean, he's more suspension as well, but you just you, it's very hard for them to keep the same players on the field that, like, for multiple weeks, which sucks. But in saying that, though, like, something I just spoke about was like their strength, and it's an incredible one through 13 they've got. So I think nearly every single player there is a rep player or is the next waiting. It's just ridiculous how, like, how strong their starting 13 is, and there's no excuse really this year to not win a comp. Right, for the Storm, for me, their weakness is just the amount of experience that they've lost. So losing the Bromwich brothers and Kafusi, like when the going gets tough, they know what to do. Where you got players coming in like Eli Katara and stuff, where they might try and be the hero and not just play the, to the one percenters and like just get into the grind of it. And they might just try and go for the big play and stuff like that. But the Storm, like they'll be fine, honestly. Like I'm not worried about the Storm at all. A lot of people are, but the club that's still led by Bellamy and Panisi is in no trouble whatsoever. But yeah, there, there is like a lot of experience like last year. I think that's one of the reasons why they brought in Tarek Sims is because he's played so many games. He's been in different clubs, different situations, origin player. Like he will be able to mentor those young boys. But yeah, like there's, there's no reply, like, there's no replacement for time. Um, and I think it just Storm's going to have to be patient with those young blokes coming through. Uh, but their strengths, as I said, like Craig Bellamy, you can never ever rule out a side that's led by Craig Bellamy. He's an incredible, like, just leader of men, and I think they'll have absolutely no worries at all. Um, like, with this, like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they make top four this season. Now, for the Eels, I think their weakness is probably just their losses. Like, Reed Marnie is going to be a huge blow. Josh Hodgson, yes, he's a good player, but he's definitely not Reed Marnie. I think uh, coming off an ACL at Hodgson's age could be a bit how you go, but at the same time, you've seen how big the bloke looks. Like, I don't know, they're on some something. Something special over at the Eels there with that weights program, but you've also lost what Isaiah Papali'i, which is a big loss. Nick Hore is a massive loss depth-wise, um, but then in saying that, you brought in Jack Murchie um, and as well Ryan Madison still at the club. Like I do think they'll still be okay, but it sounds funny, but I think for the Eels, their strength is losing a grand final. They know that now, they believe that they can get there, but they know what it takes now to win a comp. They've had that hurt, and they'll use that as fire. I don't know whether they can make a grand final this season. For Eels fans, I hope they do. But yeah, look, I don't know. The Eels are in a lot better position than a lot of people think, in my opinion. Moving over to the Sharkies, the weakness is depth in key positions again for them. I, I don't really know. Like right now, with Lockie Miller gone and K Dykes done his ACL, who's the replacement fullback? Like Eero, I don't know. He's more, I've I've heard he's more of an outside back. Um, and then. One of the halves get injured. It's like Braden Trindle coming in, Connor Tracy, and it's like as much as they do a job, it's still not as good as you want it to be. The Sharkies, though, their strength for me is maintaining the same roster. Like they've had barely any player turnover, um, and I think it's like they're pretty much the same. All right, let's run it back. We went better than we expected to in our first season together. Let's see how good we can go with our second season. Like they've all, the whole clubs had another extra preseason with each other, so I think they'll be absolutely fine. You go over the Cowboys. I've, what I've written down for their weakness is depth in terms of like there's people they've lost. Like they've lost the Hammer, who can cover the whole back line. They've lost Gilbert, who can cover the whole four pack. And I don't really see where that's been replaced. They'll still be fine, but I don't know if they get a couple of injuries. Maybe they wish they had a hold onto those blokes. But I think again, same as the Sharks. The strength is like maintaining like the roster. Like the core of the roster is still the exact same. Like, most of the time, Tom Gilbert and uh, the Hammer are coming off the bench anyway. So the Cowboys are like in a very exciting position. Like, and I think making Queensland Country Bank a fortress is unreal. And like they're they're another exciting team to watch this season. Now, finally, over to the Penrith Panthers. Their weakness is losing Coruscant. He's one of the best, if not the best, nine getting around the comp. Mitch Kenny's really good, so is Sonny Luke, but they're definitely not happy Coruscant, um, and they're not going to be able to replace what he does. But their strength is just having having the best roster in the comp 
in four grades. Like, <laughs> their depth of their club is ridiculous. The fact that under 20s came in and won a finals game in like New South Wales Cup last season is ridiculous. It just shows you how good their whole squad is and just the system at Penrith, how strong it is. So there is my strength and weakness of every single club going into the 2023 NRL season. Let me know what you think your club's biggest strength is in the comments and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.